Welcome to Two Hypnotherapists Talking with me, Denise Billen Mejia in Delaware, USA. And me, Martin Ferber in Preston, UK. This weekly podcast is for anyone and everyone who would like to know more about the fascinating subject of hypnosis and the benefits it offers. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist and psychotherapist. I'm a retired medical doctor turned consulting hypnotist. We are two hypnotherapists talking. So let's get on with the episode. Um, hey, Martin, you... how are you? Hey, Denise. <laughs> happy New Year. Oh, yes, indeed. Now, of course, full disclosure, we are recording this right before Christmas, but it <laughs> is by the time anybody's listening, it's definitely, we're well into the new year. Yeah. It's actually, yeah. The, the three things that happen in, in January, Christmas, which is, you know, I have Christmas, my anniversary, New Year, my birthday. Now the season's over, my birthday's happened, and, and I can get on with my year. And I think that's what you and I were going to talk about. Well, yeah, right? I mean, we, we can't do the first one of the New Year without talking about New Year's resolutions, can Yeah, we? yeah. Do you have any? Um, well, that you want to talk about? I mean, sometimes yeah, they're private. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just just to resist the surgeon's knife for another year yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> yeah no seriously um no i've got a new mantra for the new year i don't know about new year's oh, resolution yes. i've got a new mantra um because of course i'm working with those consultant psychiatrists now and things here i know my mm -hmm. stuff i know my place yes yep. good <laughs> that's my new mantra resolutions but no, I don't think I, I don't think you were ever confused about what your position in the in the various parts of healthcare were right you just want to make sure other people understand yeah you. I just want to make sure yeah. people know that I I know where I fit in as a complementary mm -hmm. therapist do you have um personal resolutions or are these business resolutions uh, I, I don't tend to go for resolutions um not that I have anything against them I, I tend to sort of like plan ahead on an ongoing basis mm -hmm. uh, throughout the year rather than saying this is this date I will do this by then right but of course um, I, I think you have the same but you know it's the end of the tax year is the 31st of December here for for normal uh, people six of April so, for us ah uh, yes no we have to file in April but but the, the everything that came in before the midnight of the night oh, of that's the, the 31st the, that's the cutoff so so it's a natural place to make business decision you know it's mm. a, okay clean slate can't write a, today's stuff off yet last year this is this is where i'm going now um the personal stuff is the stuff i think that gets dumped really early mm. but well by the time this is being listened to we've already a week into new year many resolutions have probably passed <laughs> yeah i mean usually the, the smoking and drinking ones have usually broke those by about five minutes past midnight because they're, they're still in the new year's eve mode uh, yeah a lot of people so then they try and start the next day and possibly hung over so it's oh, i'll just have a little drink um yeah <laughs> yeah it is hard yeah plus it's still well in this hemisphere it's still cold and dark. Yeah, <laughs> so and it's, still it's a hard festive to... season until the yes. sixth of January, of course. You know, for those that follow the twelfth night thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, like, well, let's talk a little bit about resolutions then. About... Yeah. Okay. So, what kind of resolutions and what kind of things can you put in place that help you keep them? For a start, I think we should say something about realistic resolutions. Yeah realistic. <laughs> and also, I'm going to quit smoking, and I'm going to lose forty pounds, and yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I was just going to say, realistic resolutions, start with one. Mm -hmm. Start with one. Because anybody, to my mind, who is going to try and A, lose weight or get on top of their weight issues and mm -hmm. B, give up smoking at the same time is doomed to failure on probably on both. Or at least extreme unhappiness. Yeah. While they're going through it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's understanding more about how we develop these habits over a period of time and how we alter ourselves and our state of mind, which is, of course, where we help um, for people to alter their relationships to things, be that food or smoking or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would say just try and give up one thing at a time. Well, a resolution doesn't have to be give up either. No, it can be, no. You, know, you can, you it can, can frame it. So, something. Yes, exactly. I mean, you can frame weight loss into I'm going to eat healthier. And well, I always say more. that. That's <laughs> yes. the first line of my book. Mm -hmm. No one likes a loser, so don't be one. 
Yes, don't, good don't idea. Talk about losing weight. Talk about uh, gaining. Uh, okay. Now, this this will be a fun question because it actually isn't yet January as we're no. speaking. How close to finishing that book are you? Oh, maybe by because that was a to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> because because you did you went you you made the decision mm. and made time and really worked on it. So yeah, it, yeah. It sort of... I, I I think I think we're just at the um, polishing and perfection stage at the moment. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I always say don't be a loser it, we're not mm. programmed to lose we're programmed to hunt and gather and acquire and hoard and hoard which yeah is, which, which is another, is another one yes, yes, exactly. hoard, um, because you never know what's going to happen yeah well this is it i mean that i can remember being a kid actually and asking one of my grandparents why have you got all this food in the larder there were stacks of tins and bags of sugar and things mm -hmm. and it was in case there's a war yeah <laughs> yeah well, of course they that that was very real. Mm, no, it was then back in the 60s because, of course, it was only 20 years since. Uh... I know. Isn't it funny when you look back? You no, know, when I, if I remember, do you remember, what, was it All Our Yesterdays? Oh. It was a weekly show. I think it wasn't David Dimbleby, but it was one of those types who, um, it was 25 years ago today. This was happening. This was happening. Oh. I could never figure out why on earth are they going on about this ancient war? Because mm. I was born, you know, eight years later. <laughs> it was, it was real. And now, and now, when I look back, it was practically yesterday. Mm. Such a different view of time as you age. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I used to laugh when I was younger, and people say, "Oh, the years go quicker as you get older." Right. I used to laugh at that and think, "No, they don't." Well, they do. They absolutely yep. do. Or your perception of time changes. Well, because time isn't real. But no. yeah. but that's not too philosophical for this. This is, yeah. this is the wrong podcast for that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so getting back to resolutions then. Yeah, okay. So my tip would be only try one thing at once. Mm -hmm. um, and go now you can yourself. you can plan. You can say yeah. this year I'm yeah. going to quit smoking. Because we both know that that can be almost instantaneous if you're really serious. Mm. Because unlike eating, you either smoke or you don't. Mm. Whereas with eating, you, you eat. got to eat. Yeah. <laughs> so it that that obviously and it obviously take you much longer. Mm. Um, so personally, I would advise a client to quit smoking first because we well, have a, qu a quickish win, depending yeah. on how prepared if, if they really want to. I think it helps them almost immediately. But of course, their taste buds start coming back to them. So they're going to need help with the food. <laughs> well, yeah, then they eat more. Yeah. I mean, of course, the other thing you just mentioned there is if they want to, well, there's no point trying if you don't want to because you won't mm -hmm. succeed. Well, you uh, will. Yeah, what, what you really want, which is to continue your habits. Mm -hmm. you're, you're right on track for those. Yeah. So do you advocate? making a little mental list or even a physical list of what you actually wish to achieve in the year? Or do you ask your clients, you suggest that they, they make shorter increments. I'm going to have a first quarter resolution. I'm going to have a second quarter resolution. You can call them seasons if you prefer. <laughs> I'm going to have a winter resolution, a spring resolution, a summer resolution, or just don't try and make more than one change per two months or well, something if, like that. If I'm, looking ahead with somebody with a client i will ask them what will they be doing if they've achieved everything they want to achieve through the year what will they mm -hmm. be doing 12 months from now tell me about that and get them to tell me in detail about how that will be and describe it as in mm -hmm. what they will be doing or what they won't be doing and then we take a look back and see the steps they would have taken to get there so we're positively introspecting rather than negatively introspecting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all part of the process in examining the mindset before we embark on treatment, as it were. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we're actually identifying the things themselves they need to do to achieve these steps. Right. So what other kinds of things? I mean, it's smoking and, and weight, because also people are looking forward to summer and being able to go to the beach and all those things. Um, it, do you so, deal with at all? Do you deal at all with, with people who need to change their body image? Um, I think that's a huge amount to do with yeah, how, how body well, image, you well body image weight management that you know that they're, they're linked um mm -hmm. no it's more other things um where people are asking for example i want to be more confident in 12 months time 
Mm-hmm. So I would say, and what would you be doing when you when you are more confident? Not if, mm-hmm. when. When you are more confident, what would you be doing? How would that be? Who would notice? What would they notice? And again, get the client to really positively visualize that future, that future mm-hmm. self. Um, <clears throat> and the more they start to describe it, the more they get a feel for it. Yeah. I get a lot of people who consider, obviously, almost everybody, doesn't matter what they come to first, they always wind up talking about weight loss because mm. this is America and there's a lot of people with issues. Mm. Um, <laughs> but body image is a large part of that because there's people don't come in one size. <laughs> we all seem to no. try and get to be one size. Anyway, another another issue. Um, more exercise. You know, do, do you... Do you find a lot of people come because they want to actually use the gym membership that they have and not be wasting their money? Or do they want to, what, what is the primary driver for them wanting to establish a fitter lifestyle? Yeah. A more fit lifestyle. Strangely enough, most of the people I see, I seem to attract people in my age group. And when I say that, I mean the broad spectrum of 40 plus rather Mm -hmm. than people under 40. Um, of course, I'm well over 40. Um, and anything to do with weight or going to the gym or anything else is all about getting healthier. Mm-hmm. It always seems to stem from getting healthier. Nobody comes to me because they want to suddenly be an Olympic athlete um, no. or turn into a muscle man, for example. But they do, yeah, they may well want to go to the gym and tone up. Mm-hmm. Um, for, um, I suppose, suppose I'm fortunate that these people have realistic expectations. You know, if somebody came to me that was 12 yeah. stone dripping wet and said they want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, then, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm not the therapist for them. Especially if they're already 40. Yeah, they, they um, need a personal trainer at the gym rather than a hypnotherapist. Mm-hmm. But they might need some help with getting out of bed in the morning and going to that appointment with the personal trainer. There mm, are some yeah, of those, in which yeah. case I can help, yeah. Yes. What about yeah. what about the kind of people you get with resolutions? A lot of confidence, a lot of... Um, I, we tend to attract people who are in our same sort of general demographic. So mm. I get a lot of women who are older, mm. like me, um, a lot of newly single, and therefore... Unlike you, you must add quickly well, there. Yes, yes, that, that is true. Unlike that, I am, I'm, I'm not single. But <laughs> there are a lot of women who have become single for whatever reason, mm. death being certainly part of the equation in our age group. And they, they, they're they used to interacting with the world one way, and now they've got to figure it out some other way. Some yeah. of them have been divorced or widowed two or three years before Mm. And so, and, and, and they don't know how to, they, they don't know how they should feel when they go out and try and socialize. Right. So a lot of it is confidence. So, yeah. and sometimes there'll be a little bit of weight in there and there'll be a little this in there and you know, the body image. And, um, but a, a lot of people actually, I say a lot, but several um, have come because they're not confident in their conversational skills. Okay. And yeah. so it's that sort of thing. I don't you know, teach elocution. <laughs> yes exactly and, you know i'm in america that would really confuse people mm. um but a, a lot of it is um looking back at the things they've been successful in and mm. many of them are really successful people who have had great careers of course there's that double whammy that happens people um retired and then they were widowed or they retired and that changed the family dynamic and they got divorced or, mm. you know, they, they didn't realize how much of their social life was driven by the office and, yeah, the, and or, the friendships or, they had within that. You know? Yeah. Or even, yeah, like you say, the office sort of things invited to social events as a couple, whether the woman yes. was there with because of her career with her partner or she was there supporting her husband or partner. Right. Um, different contexts again right Um, so so I get a lot of that and therefore a lot of the work that we do is just them reflecting going back remember I know you don't do regression but it's a little type baby regression we go back to last week's dinner party and we revisit it the successes that you had at that party when I say I don't do regression I mean uh, we we don't go back and try and find a past life or find out you know if you were Anne Boleyn or something (laughs) 
Um, certainly, out of trance in the pre-talk, certainly we can talk about past mm -hmm. successes and uh, identify strengths. Absolutely, we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a lot. And then, uh, but I don't know that somebody would come to me related to New Year for a phobia or a fear, but they might if it's things like fear of public speaking and they've decided mm. they need to do something about their career this year. Yeah. Or, or get a handle on their finances. I mean, hypnosis can help in so many areas. It, it's really difficult to tell. You had one in our pre-talk before we hit record here. <laughs> you have been talking about hoarding. Mm. Um, I I think for, for my issue, was, oh, my God, I'm an awful hoarder. Um, but I had to, so much stuff I had to get rid of when we got rid of our huge house and moved to our medium-sized house. And, and this one is in danger of filling up. <laughs> um, I find it very difficult, as do many people, uh, to to give away or get rid of. If I can, if I can gift something, mm. give something to somebody who comes, and says, oh, that's like, would you like to take it home? Um, that's that I can do that. Mm. But it's sort of, I I have sort of an issue with abandoning things yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. that have that have probably been in my basement for twenty years. Um, so I think that it's. I don't hoard. I don't have stacks and stacks. I have stacks of books, but I don't have stacks of National Geographic and that sort of thing. But it's very hard for me to be disciplined in the Marie Kondo way that says one new thing comes in, one new thing, one old thing leaves. Yeah, that's very hard. And only have a capsule wardrobe of twenty clothes. <laughs> no, that wouldn't work at all. No, <laughs> even though you probably only see twenty, there's a lot of others in the closet. And of course, that relates to the other thing. Several of them are in different sizes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I, I'm still sorting through some of my old stuff from when I was r rather larger than I am now. Now, that's it. What is the conversation that your subconscious is having? Is it expecting you to need them again? Or you just hate no, to no, sunk, sunk cost thing? You know, <laughs> well, no, I, I spent good money on that. I'm going to hang on to it. <laughs> no, no, no. Because I, I will give anything away to the charity shops. So that's fine. They're always uh -huh. glad of it um but now I, i've kept one or two things back just to remind me i never want to be that size again oh that's yeah that's a good use yeah, yeah. it's like I, i'll look at a pair of jeans that are sort of that wide and think no we're not going there again yeah um so that's why i that's why it's I interesting though now do you, you don't you know you've you've bravely put your pictures on your website mm. you don't mm. find that sufficient reminder um well yeah, you, but like, i don't sit don't looking look. at me website all day long um <laughs> well presumably you don't look at your closet that often <laughs> no no i came out of that years ago uh, <laughs> <laughs> very good touche yeah, good, good, good lineup now um no it's just a couple of bits i kept on one side and another one is a huge t-shirt that's got um, a logo embroidered on it from back in the day when i was a jeweler so it's got my old shop logo oh that's on it. yeah that's um, a nice so i'm keeping memory. for that reason only because yeah. I, I didn't have any small ones to keep hold of because I wasn't small then. Right. So, so I've only got so, one in bell tent size. <laughs> God, bell tents must be the girl guys. Um, so you don't really think that, that do you or Nick have an issue with hoarding? Your, your house is fairly organized? Okay. Or, uh, or is it uh, something that you fight that you, that oh, you no, need no, to remember and keep? No, no, I don't mean you fight about it. No. You fight the issue. <laughs> yeah. Do no, you have to constantly remind yourself? Not it's, to it, it's cyclical. We sort of mm. go through this thing of, you know, oh, that's nice. We'll buy that and we'll put this in and we'll put that there. And then the more stuff you have in your house, the less the corners get cleaned and the muckier it gets. And mm. then every so often it's like, right, we're throwing all that crap out. And it all goes in the go buy a new crap. <laughs> you, know, you don't throw it out. You go, it goes in the garage in boxes or it goes in the attic or whatever. Right. And then the place looks a bit bare. So you start to buy some more bits and pieces and it just goes in cycles. Yeah. And then every so often you start to clear out the attic and the garage. The last time the garage, I loved COVID. I loved mm. lockdown. Um, our garage here at the house, you couldn't get in. It was that full with stuff, that mm -hmm. all of which we never knew we needed at the time, but we did. <laughs> so and was, yet what what use was it in the garage one won't it? yeah exactly so during covid during lockdown one occasion there was about six weeks of gorgeous sunny weather which was perfect because you weren't allowed to go out of your own garden other than shopping mm -hmm. and exercise 
So I ordered this um, Dexian shelving for the, to go round the back of the garage. And we took everything out of the garage into the sunshine, sorted through the lot, put the things we wanted to keep that we thought were essential, which we still not used any of it, onto shelves and got the rest of it um, disposed of one way or the other, either in the charity shops when they reopened, gave it away to people, or some of it went down to the recycling centre, um, mm -hmm. which has a growing band of people who go there to root through everything and then take it away anyway. So it doesn't Gosh. actually go in, go in the tip, so that's fine. Um, so that was brilliant. But since then, now we've acquired more and more rubbish. <laughs> but you don't, it's just a convenience thing. Yeah. Because there are people who truly can't throw anything away. There yeah. are people who, I, I remember when, oh, several decades ago now, when we were house shopping, mm. um, I, I went to see somebody's house and it literally was so, it was like something out of a movie. There were so many stacks of National Geographic and, and old newspapers that you could not move from one room to the other. It was probably a lovely house, but I couldn't mentally get past all these. It was, it was dangerous to walk. Mm. Very interesting that she had a showing and, and her realtor had not had a conversation with her about, probably tried to have the conversation. Mm. So people who have that kind of issue that mm. that level need professional help, possibly from an organizer as well as a hypnotist or some other form yeah. of therapy. But for most people, it's just the inertia of making a decision about things. Yeah, there's I mean, that. Or, or as you say, for the people who need help, it's that some kind of fear of letting go yeah. of the things. Um, some well, kind your of, grandmother and her canned goods. I mean, how, yeah. how could you... Yeah. Some kind of insecurity that we may need this in the future or whatever. Um, no, with, with us, some of it's just downright untidiness because um, we are both extremely guilty of opening cupboards and just throwing things in. Um, and then there comes a day when you open the door and it all falls out and you know you've got to sort it then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's but but, the, know, but that's the question just... is whether if it's not causing discord in the home, if it's not... You know, if it, if it is if living like that is not really a problem for you, mm. then it's not a problem for you, and so yeah, you don't need it. to fix that. But if it was every time you went to get something in the coat closet, fifteen things fell on your head. Yeah, it would be different. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah absolutely. No. It's not that kind of an issue. Well, I mean, I'm just thinking of one example of the top of my head. Upstairs in the attic, I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of old vinyl records. But I don't want to get mm. rid of those because, you know, the vinyl you suddenly a... come back in fashion. They're selling um, record players again yeah, now. Yeah, but do you have a record player? for this? I do, for yeah. Records? It's, again, oh, that's okay. up in the attic. Yeah, I okay. do have a record player. So it's you a... could. You just don't like, you want to keep your options open. Yeah, it, <laughs> that is something, because vinyl, you know, it, it belongs to a past era. People keep old gramophones, don't they? It, it's, mm -hmm. To me, it's something... It's not rubbish. It's something. Yeah, I, I don't know. You're you're far yeah, better with your descriptive if, language than I am. I, I I wonder if there's just something different about records. I, I don't have any trouble getting rid of cassettes. It does oh, I hate the things. And, and and with those, what were those? V8. What were they? Eight tracks. That was eight tracks. Oh, eight I, tracks I, was before no, cassettes. Yeah. Yeah. No problem getting rid of those. But vinyl, yes, it's difficult yeah. to let go of, even when you don't have a, a record player. Yeah. You also, I think it may be um, if you collected them when they were current things and not mm. nostalgic things. It may also be the nostalgia of I remember when that was. I mean, that was our song for whoever the hour was at that yeah. time. Um, I think there's a lot of it. And there's a lot of that with holding on to things. Mm. You know, the hundreds. Holding on to the sentiment. Yeah, you're holding on to the sentiment. It is recommended by many that you take a photograph and keep the photograph. But touching the photograph is not the same thing. No. <laughs> no I mean, this is it. I've just while we're talking about the vinyl, I've got picture discs and coloured vinyl discs and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. I mean, I suppose a lot of them are highly collectible, actually. Um, but I don't think of them in monetary terms. It's just, yeah, it's the sentiment. It's the whole mm -hmm. vinyl era. Um, you know, so, yeah, it's I don't know. Our youth. <laughs> yeah, our youth, yeah. Back in the day. Um, yeah. yeah, but in, t in terms of anything else, no, I've, I've not had trouble letting things go. It's just getting that thing of you keep acquiring stuff and then it's a matter of 
right, today's the day I'm going to sort tidy things up and sort things out. And then you end up mm-hmm. with a pile of stuff to get rid of. <clears throat> but I'll mm-hmm. tell you something. When you do that, you know, I'll feel better for it afterwards when you oh, have yes. a good sort out. Don't you find that if you clean the kitchen drawer out or a cupboard out or something? There, there used to be a Tupperware ad. I think it was tomorrow when Robert made. Tupperware. Um, ad. Yeah, there used to be an ad here. Um, or a couple. Oh, we've got too much stuff. And they go out and they buy these big totes and they put everything away and it's all organized. And they say, okay, now we're going to go buy more stuff. <laughs> yeah. And that is the danger, replacing yeah. it with more stuff. Yeah. Because you've really got to address why is it that you have the stuff? Yeah. Sometimes it's just you don't want and and there's also that weird phenomenon where things get cluttered and you don't see it after a while you 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 just subtract it from the picture yeah and absolutely yeah so your your brain is keeping you in its nice comfortable place so you don't have to deal with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you turn a blind eye to it mm-hmm. yeah um, now I, I, go on no i was going to ask what what business resolutions do you have you've had a pretty successful 2022 i think I, i'm i'm not what, complaining uh, it's, you, it's been great no yeah so measuring success in number of people you have reached rather than whatever other criteria people may choose to use you've got your you've got your we've got this podcast which is yeah great for us if everybody's listening that's fabulous but we <laughs> love talking to each other um so we got a podcast you've got your lancashire telegraph the telegraph or telegram telegram telegraph yeah column. Uh, article column which is every week you're you are by the time this is being listened to at least putting the very finishing touches to your book if not <laughs> actually in print um and you've got two sets of doctor's offices where you see clients and you've just picked up another source and you're teaching in an area too um, I'm thinking of the diversity and inclusion group that you. Oh, that, yeah, you that's the charity with. work I do. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, yeah I, I, I do a role model story. It's part of a um, department for education training thing, going into schools and teaching children about diversity and acceptance in general. Yeah. Right, uh, just in general, just just so everybody can embrace their differences. Well, when that that is the point of inclusion. Yeah, everybody. Inclusion <laughs> means everyone. Yeah. That's my hashtag, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I set that up last year. But you've, you've gone from zero to that. Mm. I, I don't think we knew each other in 2021, or the tail end of 2021. It was, yeah, it was met. just before the Christmas when um, we joined Sarah's group. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah, because even though we were in, in the growth club, yeah. we, we hadn't crossed paths because of the time difference. So, yeah. So you've gone a long way. So that's is this... Too. Are you in... Do you have set, you don't have to say what they are, but do you have things that you definitely wish to achieve next year? Are you ready to take a big breath and sort of um, enjoy what you've already achieved this yeah, year? Yeah, sort I've, of integrate those things. Yeah, I think I've got to the position where I want to be. What I would like to see now is um, <clears throat> I'm not particularly reaching out in any more directions. I'd just like to consolidate what I have, for example, like this podcast get more mm-hmm. viewers and listeners to it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't want to set any more podcasts up or anything like that. I'm more than happy with what we're doing. But mm-hmm. to get some more listeners and viewers would be great. To be able to interact more with people in the comments, that kind of thing would be really lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, the newspaper, that's great. Long may that continue. Um, and then, as you say, I've reached out to some different bases to reach clients because I'm now accepting referrals from um the psychiatrist that i work with which is nice as well so yeah it would be good to as one client reaches the end of their course of treatment to to get another one on board and and to basically help as many clients with different issues as possible i think yeah i'd like to broaden the issues that i deal with um that would be Mm -hmm. nice um and, and sort of broadenly spectrum of clients different age groups different backgrounds that kind of thing because um, okay. I do find the work I do interesting. I enjoy what I do. Good. Do you think you'll have a little less, um, you'll have more consistency? And I'm I'm seeing clients at this hour of the day, because a big thing for me, as you know, when I'm working with my physician friends mm. is self-care, which means yeah. protected time for yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but for, uh, from my part though, I always think that if people, I, I regard what I do as private healthcare. 
Mm-hmm. And I think, to my mind, private healthcare is the people who can afford private healthcare are, are working usually. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't want to use their work time for the private mm-hmm. healthcare. So it should be, for me, I think I should be available at times to suit them, which is why I'm available evenings and Saturdays if required. Um, yes. But so, you but, but you protect other time. Oh, I protect other time. Yes. Yeah. And I absolutely right. make time for myself and my partner because that's absolutely crucial. Yeah. Um, that we, as you know, invariably Sunday is my one day. I will not do anything, not for religious okay. reasons, for home reasons, because that's our day together. Um, yeah. Which which suits us both. And if we get that one day, then we can support each other yeah, so, the rest of the week and put up right. with each other's working hours and that kind of thing. That's fine. So anyway, enough about me. What about you with your business plans this year, Denise? Because um, <laughs> I, I morphed a little bit because I'm going to be doing some training for doctors. I know. Um, um, it, the, again, we're recording this before Christmas. Mm. And stuff isn't really going to be finalized until probably the middle of January. But but it's, it's definitely coming together. Um, that I am hoping will allow me to be able to be a little more consistent with days that I can still do the things when I was in full retirement before I mm. was well enough to work when I had you know I would go for lunch with friends and I you know I want to be able to build ladies some of that back lunch. in the ladies at lunch exactly I am married so the weekend tends to be for family yeah because my husband so I mean he works from home and he works weird hours anyway but um mostly because he has zoom meetings in different time zones <laughs> but um so that's important and sort of i love what i do but mm. i think i need to get more structure to it and my resolution is to be a little bit more accountable to myself and do things on time of course there's always something it shows up there's a yeah social things that show up covid for those of you who don't know i managed to catch covid just as it was going away um I, I I'm fine. I, I but it knocked out almost three weeks of work mm. time. I couldn't do anything at all. And uh that threw me because it was it was I had booked out time to do all this stuff and I hadn't booked clients so I could do all this stuff good because I didn't have to go client mm. you know, cancel clients. Um but it it threw off late November and, and December for me. Mm. But I think we're catching up. I say we. Do, the do royal things, we. Just, just digressing for one moment then, COVID. Yeah. You're, you're fully vaxxed and boosted, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. you were quite. And I wear a mask it. and I wear a yeah. mask when I'm out. I was exhausted. You were quite I, over I, it. Yeah, I wasn't in any danger at all, no. but I was exhausted and mm. I really couldn't. I was. I was actually saved by the World Cup. Who knew that I would start watching soccer again? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, were you sat there with your little rattle and scarf? No, no, I didn't no. go that far. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting. And I was listening in Spanish because my husband's from the Dominican Republic. So yeah. we got the Telemundo version. Um, so screaming Spanish every time Argentina did well, as of course it has, we now know, done very well. Um, but it was it was sort of nice background. <laughs> it was like, didn't, and it didn't matter if I missed it because, you know, it's soccer. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> So, but it was a little bit of a, a callback to, you know, when I was a kid and my dad would be watching soccer and I'd be wandering around making cups of tea and catching little bits now and again. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was nice. Yeah. So uh, I'm hoping that um, my my goals really for this year is that I get a more, I can be a little bit less location dependent. Hmm. I do have one or two patients, I, clients I see physically at the doctor's office. But for the most part, I can do it on Zoom. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to travel more mm. coming year. And, of course, there's all these, these factors that you can't control, like air traffic control, people going on strike, or the price of petrol, the price of fuel going through the roof, or yeah. some other epidemic coming through and everything closing down again, or at least restricting the way that people travel. So it, it's hard to plan for some of those things, but it's a good idea to have a... This is what I, I always, I always have a plan B and C. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, I also have a sort of mind that says, and I need a D and an E and an F and a G. <laughs> I need to, I need to, you know, it's, make, it's, make two or three really, really good ones. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's good to plan ahead, though. I mean, if COVID taught us anything, it is that everything we've got can suddenly be taken away at the flick of a switch in mm-hmm. terms of the lockdowns happening. Um, I mean, <clears throat> 
okay, just getting back to that conversation we had earlier, when one of my grandparents said, oh, these tins are in case there's a war. They never said in case there's a plague. It was never on the agenda. Well, it may well have been but in your thought process, even though we're I not do... allowed to mention the D word. It may have right. been on, on your wonder... radar that there could be some kind of big contagion or something. I wonder if it was, though. They had been through the big polio epidemic. Mm. When my grandma, well, you're 10 years younger than me, so... You're presumably your grandparents ten years younger than my grandparents. My my oldest grandparent, who's mm. of course long gone now, was born in 1901. Mm. So that person went through, and my my mother's mother was born in 1908. Mm. So she had gone through two world wars, losing children to diseases we do not lose children to anymore. Yeah, thankfully, um, all of those things. So I think there were a lot of things they did. That they didn't talk about because it was this is just the way you live. Who needs to talk about it? Mm. It's, this is what you, you know, uh, what you do. You're listening to us now. At least it's the eighth of January. Uh, next week's edition, yeah, we'll have Sarah. Uh, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> next week's episode, we'll have Cheryl and Larry Elman, and they're going to be talking about the Dave Elman. A lot of things, but they'll be talking about the Dave Elman legacy conference and we're putting a link in the show notes that will seem to be a little erratic because they're not to do with this call but um we want people to have a chance to to look at the conference because it's coming up on the 20th 21st and 22nd it is yeah absolutely for, for people in the uk and for perhaps people who aren't just aren't that familiar with hypnosis and are just showing an interest dave elman was a very famous hypnotist from the in the 1950s and 1960s he was on television and he trained medical doctors in the use of hypnosis um his son is larry elman and his daughter-in-law is cheryl elman and they are on next week's podcast and they are sort of hypnosis royalty part of a, a hypnosis <laughs> dynasty i suppose <laughs> indeed indeed so uh well worth coming tuning in again next week to listen to that conversation and by all means check out the link below uh ahead of time to yeah. know more about the conference particularly if you are a hypnotist yourself because uh it there's tons yeah of um, value um, in that conference. we do hope you've enjoyed listening this week to the entire contents of denise, denise and mine's house <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we told you it's just two hypnotists talking. Yeah, it is. All right. <laughs> okay. We'll see you again Thank next you, week, buddy. Denise, with our guests. Okay. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed listening. Please remember this podcast is designed to give you an insight into therapeutic hypnosis and is for educational purposes only. So remember, Consult with your own healthcare professional if you think something you've heard may apply to you or a loved one. If you found this episode useful, you can apply for free continuing professional development or CME credit using the link provided in the show notes. Feel free to contact either of us through the links in the show notes. Join us again next week.